Ever since the original Log4j exploit, we have seen a waterfall of information that have kept IT teams and cybersecurity professionals across the world buzzing. The original exploit, CVE 20218224, has been covered on this channel before, and if you wanna watch those videos, be sure to stay to the end, I'll link you right to them. But the original exploit led to unauthenticated remote code execution, and all it required of the attacker was a single string in an input field. Now this impacted everything from Apache servers to Minecraft and everything in between. Simply put, it flipped the internet on its head. Right now, I wanna go over three things that we have learned about the Log4j exploit since we last met. And by the way, before we get in, you should hit that subscribe button. It's like right there, it's free. And we're gonna be talking more about Log4j and about other things going on in cybersecurity. And I'd hate for you to miss out. Anyway, the first thing that we've learned is there is no magic fix. By that I mean, you can pass and I highly encourage you to patch and install upgrades, but that may not necessarily be the magic bullet that you need to be able to remediate the situation. Originally, Apache released update 2.15 to patch the original CVE. However, according to research conducted by Praetorian Labs, version 2.15, it is not only vulnerable to CVE 2021-45046, which leads to denial of service, it is also vulnerable to to data leakage and data loss. So Apache released update 2.16. All good, right? Unfortunately, no. CVE 2021-45105 was discovered in version 2.16. And it leads to, you guessed it, more denial of service. That prompted the release of yet another upgrade, version 2.17. So you might be thinking, if every patch is potentially vulnerable, then what's the point? Well, that's kind of true with everything. But what we want to be trying to separate ourselves from the RCE, which are these updates do. Plus, you know, with more research will come more vulnerabilities. And then the patch is the response to those vulnerabilities. So if anything, that should hasten the need for getting patches because, you know, you don't want to be vulnerable to some of these exploits. But at the same time, it kind of might demonstrate how quickly some of this can go, especially whenever more attention is on a certain service. Attackers are constantly checking vulnerabilities inside various versions of the different services that are used out in the internet. And as soon as those exploits are used, the cat's out of the bag and now it's on the engineering and development team to be able to roll out a patch. And so the cycle continues. You're really only seeing this as kind of like an example of what else is going on in cybersecurity. So definitely be sure to continue patching and upgrading. Don't get discouraged just because more vulnerabilities are being found. Just keep patching. And also do stay up to date on news and information on this kind of thing. Because for all we know, RCE is again, just right around the corner. So, you know, we wanna make sure that we're staying abreast of information on these versions. The second thing that we learned about the Log4j exploit is attackers are starting to automate this attack. Now we've actually already talked about this. Attackers have been automating this attack. This may not necessarily be new information. However, they have shown an ability to use the automated attack to be able to exploit systems in a wide variety across wide scopes on the internet. This isn't exactly unprecedented. Earlier this year, we talked about the Microsoft Exchange hack where it's believed that the attackers automated their attack trying to basically collect as much ownership on different machines before Microsoft was able to roll out a patch. That in fact ballooned the amount of systems that they were able to get control of, expanding to over 100,000 organizations impacted by the time it was all said and done. This exploit is also incredibly easy to exploit. It's just a single string in cases where LDAP is enabled, and then in cases where LDAP isn't enabled, attackers can still take additional steps to attempt to redirect the vulnerable system to their own controlled system. So what does this mean for you? Basically, you are in a race with adversaries and they are automating their attacks so they have considerable speed which means that the time to wait around for the next to patch your system it's right now you should patch it in fact pause this video or keep it playing and watch some of my other videos in the background and patch your system that's a good idea that you should do definitely continue playing these videos in and patching. If you're patched at 2.15 or 2.16, you're also not out of the woods yet because again, we already talked about the denial of service vulnerabilities that are out. So definitely get up to 2.17. The third thing that we've learned about the Log4j exploits is that this is gonna be around for a long time. Log4j is just another example of some of the cyber threats that exist out on the internet. Some of you said it in the comments of my previous videos. This has shades of Heartbleed. You know, we talk about Eternal Blue, we talk about Heartbleed, 
made. We talk about solar winds. We're talking about all kinds of these exploits that have been done and, and cyber attacks that have happened out in the wild. And those are just things that they definitely take a long time to, to work on. I mean, there are still systems vulnerable to eternal blue today. We're still kind of dealing with the fallout of solar winds. These are all just, you know, Log4j isn't gonna go away tomorrow or in the new year. It's going to be something that we will continue to deal with uh, long into the future. Now, I wanna make a note. This might be a, an interesting kind of trend that we may see in the future. Maybe not. So take, you know, take my words here with a grain of salt. But there are many projects that are widely used out on the internet that are really not maintained by teams that you might think of. You might think of like, you know, the teams that are maintaining iOS or Windows. And it's, you know, Apple and Microsoft that are doing, or respectively, that are doing those projects. But for a lot of these kinds of projects, you know, like that are done on Linux, it might just be a small team of people or it might even be a handful of individuals that are doing it on their free time. And it's not their fault that vulnerabilities happen to exist in their projects. It just It's a natural thing. Even on Windows and iOS, there are vulnerabilities that exist. But that can be kind of a symptom of whenever you don't exactly have as many eyes on a particular project. And then, of course, whenever the first outside eyes on your project are that of a cyber adversary who's looking to exploit vulnerabilities in that system, well, they might just be able to find quite a lot of things. And Log4j might be the start of other kinds of attacks where attackers are looking for vulnerabilities and widely used in under-maintained projects that exist out on the internet. They're out there. So patching is really an important thing to do, but monitoring and surveillance is really the kind of that main thing that you need to be focusing on. It's not enough to patch. We've already talked about, you know, patches, you, you have to patch because you want to fix your vulnerability to the exploits, but that's not exactly going to get you completely out of the woods. Monitoring and performing incident response and detection duties, those are the kinds of things that will really give you the security that you need to do. If you're an individual, then that might mean, you know, implementing a firewall and using a virus scanner and just kind of like paying attention to the alerts that you get on your computer from your virus scanner for potential threats on your system. If you're in an organization, then it might require using an entire team or, or hiring somebody, if you haven't already, to perform these duties. We do this not just to protect ourselves, but to protect each other. So if you haven't seen my previous Log4j videos, check the link on the top. That's the playlist of the previous Log4j videos. And if you are interested in tips and tricks on protecting your computer, definitely check that bottom video. That's just for you. And be sure to like and subscribe to this video because Santa is angry and he has my address. Have a good one.